Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in the USL Championship. Busy, busy match week as we get you ready for uh, week number three and week number four with what uh, has been going on. We've got power rankings. We've got your goal of the week nominee. We've got your save of the week nominee. We've got everything going on in USL Championship, all the news and notes and everything that's fit to print. And we will go back and let you know what happened in the week that was before we catch you up with the week that will be. On Friday the 24th, Pittsburgh Riverhounds and the Miami FC, 1-1 draw at Highmark. At HEB, it was uh, RGV and Monterey Bay, another 1-1 draw. A lot of matches on Saturday the 25th, no real surprise. At Trinity Health, Birmingham Legion, with a 1-0 win over Hartford Athletic at Lynn Family. This is our Eastern Conference match of the week. El Paso Locomotive on the road after starting off with their first three at home. They go to Lynn Family to take on Lou City. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at uh, USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. And we are underway from Lynn Family Stadium. Mogul sends it long. Nensei Pavkovic, now to Navarro. Just joined ahead of this season, Mark Navarro. Sends it long, why not with the wind? Did you count how many times that ball changed direction in the air? For their home opener. A home opener they've lost only once. It was 2020 against Pittsburgh. Navarro whips it in, and nobody touched it. He'll claim that goal himself. Morton never saw it. In a game so tight for 38 minutes, it's a quirky one, but it counts all the same. Organization was just changing the point of attack, isolated defender 1v1 as Navarro elects to come inside. That does two things. That sh shades Kyle Morton. Too much traffic, he can't see it. And when you whip a ball into a dangerous situation, good things happen. No one needs to touch it. It's a very tricky thing for a goalkeeper to. Zacharias! Stunning Louisville at the Estopino end. El Paso up two right before the half. And the Yokes let in. Ball from Diaz. You can just see the oncoming running. The anticipation to get in behind Kawazmi. The clinical finish. Gonzalez to Mushigalusa. Atiti cuts, crosses toward the back post. It almost goes in. Caught up in that wind. Benny Diaz had to touch it over the bar. 1v1, we've seen it throughout his career. Here, Mushtagalusa, I don't know if he has eyes for that goal, if he even means it. So just to put this thing, test the goalkeeper, and it Diaz. Louisville still with just one official shot on target. I don't know that they will actually credit a shot on that one for. Give it away here at the back. One on one with Morton. That's three for El Paso. Nightmare at the back. Petar Petrovic makes them pay. It's a big no-no to play this square, especially in your defensive half. But there's no reaction. Petrovic is the first to react to get in the better side of Perez. And once again, he crosses the ball down to the left-hand side of Kyle Martin. Too quick, too clinical. Well taken finish. Waiting for some help. Josue Aron Gomez lays it inside to Calvillo. Solinak pushes it wide for Kastishin. Kastishin in front, Solinak there, saved by Martin. And they're forced back again. Amadou Dia is forced to tuck in at center back after Jimenez came on. Here is Jimenez sending it in, not it down. Volley saved, rebound, off the post. You know, just a second ago I said, if that's not the day in a nutshell for Louisville, I don't know what is. That is. And as he reads the second phase of this ball, the patience let this thing come down, get a lot of contact in it with a lot of pace. Benny Diaz knows nothing about that initial save. And they're just so unlucky. And Gonzalez does everything right, body control, technique, to put it to that far post when he gets the second bite of the apple. After an 0-3 start to the season for El Paso with three home losses, they come on the road to the fortress of Lynn Family Stadium and win 3-0. Okay. 
So a shocking result. El Paso, three on the board past Lou City, getting full points on the road at one of the toughest places to get full points in the USL Championship in that crossover matchup. Also on Saturday at Keyworth, Indy 11 with a 1-0 win over Detroit City. Patriots point another shocker, Charleston over Tampa Bay by the score of 3-0. FC Tulsa responding in kind at 1-0K, okay, a 3-0 win over Loudoun United. San Antonio FC lead, uh, beats uh, Colorado Springs by the score of 1-0 at Toyota Field. Jordan Farr saves a late penalty from the switchbacks to preserve full points. Oakland and Memphis 9-0-1 postponed because of uh, field conditions at Laney Football Stadium. Matchup in the Western Conference, our matchup of the week, Orange County SC and Las Vegas Lights, some familiar names across the championship and to the home side at Championship Soccer Stadium in Irvine. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends once again at the USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. Always a fun atmosphere at Championship Soccer Stadium. We are underway for a fun matchup tonight. Played near side here from Vegas, trying to save it before the inline. That's a terrific cross. Oh, it's the opener in the 44th. That's sensational. And it's Torres opening his account with Las Vegas. Talking about it, we suggested this pressure would develop something. But look here, he's struggling to get it there, Stafford. And then he just whips it back. And Kubo Torres gets it. Maybe you can find those front three and start giving Las Vegas a reason to get back in numbers. A chance perhaps here. The turn. Oh, a beautiful kick save. Played back in on the second ball. On oh, the bicycle. Far post. Oh, it's incredible. That is sensational. Villanueva finishes. And Orange County levels on one of the goals of the weekend in the USL. Turns. Centering pass is deflected. Goes back to Carlton. How does Vegas handle this response? Back post, Foz, all in the right back in front. There's the answer, Pato Foz, Las Vegas. Back with the advantage, it's 2-1. This crowd understandably a bit stunned. Nielsen, well this is played to the far side, Orange County here. At the edge of the area. Can they get a shot off? They do! Oh my goodness! Alaski levels it up. All of a sudden, offensive fireworks in Orange County. To the interior, Alaski's path. Have a look here. It's that tackle there coming in from Marcelo Lodge that goes straight to Alaski. But how good is he here? Opens up his angle twice and then waits, gets some space and puts it under the goalkeeper. Question marks maybe about Leo Diaz, but. He's hit it hard and quick. Maybe the goalkeeper hasn't got time to get down and make the save. But I think that's going to be pretty much game, set, and match. That will do it from Championship Soccer Stadium. A thrilling second half. Back and forth. Orange County able to fight back from two deficits. In the end, both teams will take a point from this one. Last match in the week was Sacramento Republic at Hard Health beating San Diego Loyal by the score of 1-0. FC Tulsa having to turn around, and they're going to have a very, very busy week in the uh, week that was. We'll get into the uh, standings before we get you into what FC Tulsa is up to. In the Eastern Conference, Birmingham on top after three matches. They're at seven points. Lou City is at six. Charleston Battery ahead of Pittsburgh on goal difference. They're both at five points. Remember, eight teams in the playoffs this year, uh, once again in the USL Championship. FC Tulsa, Indy 11, Loudoun United. That is your five, your six, and your seven at four points, Detroit City, with their one win in their first three matches. Three points, they're an eight. Below the playoff bar, the Miami FC and Tampa Bay are at two points. Tampa Bay has two draws in their first three matches. Hartford Athletic has two losses in their first three matches. They are at one point. Memphis 901 is minus four in goal difference. They are in the bottom of the east and the west. San Antonio FC, after three matches, they're on top in the West at seven points ahead of Sacramento Republic on goal difference. San Diego Loyal's at six points. Monterey Bay is at four. They're ahead of switchbacks on goal difference. New Mexico United has only played the one match. They've won it so far. They're at three points. They're in sixth. El Paso Locomotive, four matches already played. They are at three points with their win against uh, Lou City at Lynn Family and RGV. 
has played three matches. They have three draws. They're in the last playoff spot. Below the playoff bar, Vegas lights at two points ahead of Orange County SC on goal difference. Oakland Roots and Phoenix Rising have each played two matches. Oakland is ahead of Phoenix on goal difference, minus two, two, minus three. In stuff that you need to click on and pay attention to and look at, you've got your goal of the week nominees for match week number three. Go to uslchampionship.com and click on the uh, banner, and you can get into the stories you have until Thursday, March 30 at noon Eastern time to vote on Burke failing for the Riverhounds in their 1-1 draw with Miami. Fidel Barajas, one of the three goals for the Mexico U-17 International for Charleston Battery over Tampa Bay. Marcus Epps from FC Tulsa in their win over Loudoun. And Alex Villanueva's goal for uh, Orange County against Las Vegas. And So those are your uh, four choices for goal of the week. Vote once again through Thursday, noon Eastern time, for Goal of the Week nominees for match week number three. Power rankings are out for week number three. Sacramento is now on top, up three spots with their win. Ahead of San Antonio FC, who's at number two. Birmingham Legion up to number three. Lou City with their loss down three to four. San Diego Loyal with their loss down three to five. Charleston Battery unranked. Uh, Charleston Battery was, uh, sorry, they were at number 10. They're now up 6 to number 4. New Mexico United down 1 to 7. Indy 11 up 1 to 8. Pittsburgh down 2 to 9. And Tampa Bay is down 2 to number 10. In the Eastern Conference, you have uh, Loudoun down 5 to 16. The Miami FC down 3 to 18. Detroit City down 3 to 20. Hartford Athletic down to 23, down 1. And Memphis down 1 to number 24. So that's your power rankings for USL Championship. Once again, you go to uslchampionship.com and get all the information that you need when it comes to uh, all of the uh, interesting facts that is going on that are going on in USL Championship. Some injury news. New Mexico United's Christian Nava has suffered a torn ACL. The homegrown talent started the first match of the season. Now he's ruled out for the remainder of the year. Also for uh, El Paso, uh, Ander Egulus has been ruled out of the se- out for the season also because of a torn ACL, suffered the injury during a training session. It was announced on Monday, the torn ACL. 24-year-old joined the locomotive last year, 22 appearances, one goal, one assist across all, uh, assist across all competitions. Egulus had made one appearance in the 23 season, playing in the final minutes of the home opener against Sacramento Republic. So injury news, bad stuff for uh, New Mexico United, and for El Paso Locomotive. Now, getting you into uh, everything for the week that will be, we mentioned that FC Tulsa is going to be kind of busy, and they certainly are going to be. They have two midweek matches, and there will be a chance for them to uh, put uh, some points in the bank, and we'll see what happens with uh, with them in USL Championship. Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern at 1 OK. FC Tulsa is an underdog as Pittsburgh comes to town at a plus 129. FC Tulsa is a plus 179. Then Friday night football, it is FC Tulsa at plus 127 as El Paso comes to town, who seems to be doing better on the road with that one result so far. They're at a plus 177. Your draw is basically a plus 250. In your weekend action on April the 1st, it is another 3, 6, 9, 10 matches. And Starting early on, Hartford Athletic at 2 o'clock Eastern is a plus 104 as Orange County SC comes to visit at a plus 227. 4 o'clock, two matches, Detroit City hosting RGV at a plus 112. RGV is basically a plus 215 in the composite, courtesy of our friends at Odds Portal. Also, Loud United at Segra hosting Colorado Springs. Loud United a plus 142. Switchbacks are a plus 162. 7 o'clock Eastern, Indy 11 hosting Vegas Lights is a minus 103. Vegas Lights are a plus 258. The Miami FC at Ricardo Silva hosting Memphis 901 at a plus 100. Memphis 901 is a plus 244. 7.30, match of the week. Tampa Bay uh, Rowdies hosting Birmingham Legion. Juice Boxers pretty much threw a blanket over this whole matchup. They think that both teams are clocking in at basically a plus 155. Your draw is a plus 225. Programming note on Thursday morning in the 10 o'clock hour, 
Kaylor Hodges from the uh, Hammerdown podcast, and John Morrissey. You may know him from USL Tactics. They are both parts of the USL show. They will be on Soccer Down here, and they will be breaking down the season to date and previewing the weekend in USL Championship. Uh, go to the Google Play Store, download the SDH app, go to Spreaker, download the Spreaker app, and do a search for Soccer Down here if you are an iPhone user, and you can look at uh, Soccer Down here. That way, morning starting at 9.05, and you can also listen at Soccer Down here. Dot net. 10 o'clock, four, uh, three matches. Monterey Bay hosting San Antonio. San Antonio is a prohibited favorite at a plus 104. Monterey Bay at Cardinals, a plus 231. Oakland Roots hoping to play this one this week at Laney against New Mexico United. Oakland is a plus 138, and New Mexico United is a plus 175. Also, Sacramento Republic hosting Lou City. Lou City a plus 145 on the road. Sacramento Republic a plus 168. 1030 at Phoenix Rising Stadium. Phoenix Rising, an underdog to San Diego, Loyal. Loyal, a plus 138. Phoenix Rising, a plus 177. And your draw is a plus 235. As always, uh, you can go to our friends at Odds Portal and get your numbers there. You can also go to uslchampionship.com and get your numbers there when it comes to juice boxes and how to look at the matchups coming up on the weekend. That is all the information that's going on as we steamroll our ways into match week number four in USL Championship. For uh, everybody here, for Jason, for Jarrett, for Nick, I'm just John. A reminder, if you're in market and can catch a match, catch a match. Quality football going on in a USL Championship. If for some reason you're in market and you can't catch the match, follow along in your local provider. If you are out of market and can't catch a match and want to, all the matches are on ESPN+. Plus, so you want to follow along and uh, be a part of the USL Championship. That way, you certainly can do so on the ESPN Plus and the ESPN app. For everybody here, once again, play it safe. Enjoy your matchups. Enjoy your matches. We'll be back at it again this same time next week for everything going on in USL Championship and USLChampionship.com. Play it safe, everybody. We'll see you next time.